Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's get started. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to this show. When you're done listening, I hope you take a minute and write a quick review on whichever radio or podcast platform you've heard this show. Your insights will help others to be inspired and encouraged. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you level up in all areas of your life. I'll also be interviewing award-winning author and global entrepreneur, Raphael Badziag. Raphael spent five years researching the minds, hearts, and souls of the world's best entrepreneurs. Today, he reviews his book, The Billion Dollar Secret, that teaches you how to think like a billionaire and achieve amazing success in business and in your life. For more information about Raphael, please visit thebilliondollarsecret.com. You may also purchase his book on Amazon or in the previous guest sections in both stores at jamesmillerlifeology.com or lifeology.tv. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturday at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me anytime on iHeartRadio, as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology, or simply go to jamesmillerlifeology.com. Are you struggling to find your purpose? Has mediocrity set in and you can't imagine doing the same thing for the rest of your life? Are your relationships struggling or you aren't sure how to make long lasting changes? Then contact me, James Miller. I will help you recognize the areas in your life that are going really well. And then we will look at the areas in which you're struggling. We will create actionable solutions to help you create long lasting changes. You don't have to do this alone. Go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, Work with James. Fill out that form and it will be sent directly to me. Don't let another day go by without finding your way. Your change can start today. Once again, go to jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, Work with James. Fill out that form to get started today. One of my favorite quotes is you can't hang out with chickens and expect to soar with eagles. And what that really means is those individuals who think different, who are not satisfied with the status quo, or who do not want to continue to do the things that perhaps other people do. Doesn't mean they're better or worse, it just simply means they want something different. If you continually hang out with the same people all the time, you will become like them. In psychology, we have what's called the law of the group, which means the characteristics of each individual combine to create a new culture or new group dynamic. So if I'm someone who is an entrepreneur and wants to do all these amazing things, but I spend the majority of my time with individuals who don't have that same mindset, then unfortunately, I'm not growing and developing as an entrepreneur. I'm going to remain static. In other words, I'm going to stay the same because I'm not around individuals who sharpen me, who cause me to think a little bit different or challenge the norm. I once read that Harvey Firestone, Henry Ford, and Thomas Edison all had summer homes by each other. They were neighbors. They would spend hours talking about inventions or discussing things that most people wouldn't discuss. That story always resonated with me because you think about how successful each one of those people were individually, but combined together. Could you imagine sitting in on that conversation? Could you imagine how much you would learn? There's no difference when it comes to our everyday life. If you are the smartest or most successful person in your group, it's time to level up. There's nothing wrong with those individuals who are your friends or acquaintances. But in order to do something different, or in order to be someone different than you currently are, you have to spend time with those people who have already leveled up in their own life. Because remember, the law of the group determines how successful you're going to be. So today I would ask you, who are the people that challenge you? Who are the people in your friend group or in your acquaintance group or in your circle are the ones who are doing something different than the norm? How often do you individually spend time with them? Do you ask them how they're becoming more successful? Do you ask them to introduce you to other people who are even more successful than they are? When you invest in that time and energy with those people who are farther along than you, you will level up. You will start to have opportunities. You'll start to think differently. Your mentality starts to shift. At night when you go to bed and you close your eyes, what do you dream about? If you dream about something that seems unattainable right now, then I would have you look at your friend group. I would have you look at those individuals with whom you spend time. Are they encouraging you? Are they sharpening your mindset, causing you to think different, causing you to realize that you can accomplish your dreams? 
Are they giving you insight in the next steps that you need to take in order to accomplish your goals? You're going to hear a fantastic interview today with Raphael Badziag. He interviewed many self-made billionaires and was able to capture the mindset of how each one of them thinks. Stay tuned for this interview because you're going to realize that there are probably many areas in your life that mediocrity has shown up, but you just didn't realize it. And after you listen to this interview, be sure to purchase his book, The Billion Dollar Secret. I'm confident it will change your life. I wanted to take just a quick moment to thank you all who continually support and listen to James Miller Lifeology. I have been so blessed and honored by your continual support. However, I want to make sure that you don't miss out on anything exciting that's happening over here. So go to jamesmillerlifeology.com or lifeology.tv and sign up for the free weekly recap. Each week, I will send you an email which has all the latest radio episodes, YouTube episodes, magazine articles, and self-help products specifically for you. Once again, go to jamesmillerlifeology.com or lifeology.tv and sign up for the free weekly recap. Raphael Badziag is a global entrepreneur, top TEDx speaker, and award-winning writer, and the author of The Billion Dollar Secrets. He has spent five years researching the minds, hearts, and souls of the world's best entrepreneurs. Raphael is the first person in history to interview dozens of self-made billionaires for a book. As an expert in psychology of entrepreneurship, he has been featured on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, in the USA Today, and the Wall Street Journal. Welcome to my show, Raphael. Nice uh, to be here, and thank you for having me, James. Yes, I am really looking forward to this interview today. Now, from where are you calling us? From Germany, Europe. Oh, excellent. Wonderful. Well, I love having an international speaker come in. Um, this definitely is a global show, so I can't wait for you to inspire all of us. So this is going to be a fantastic show. It's a global project, you know. I have traveled uh, several times around around the globe to actually uh, meet and interview all these people for the for the book I wrote. When I was reading your backstory, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You definitely have so much to teach. And I want to hear a little bit of your origin story before we jump into the book, because you recognized when you looked at the world around you that you just had a different mindset. So walk us through that. How did you have your own success? Well, I... Uh... I started um, a startup in uh, e-commerce in, uh, in Germany, in Europe, back in the 90s. Out of the dorm, generally, I um, created the first fully functional uh, online shop for sporting goods in, uh, uh, in Europe, Europe, wow. European market. And um, so pioneered uh, in that area, in that industry. And it became quite successful. It became a multi-million dollar company. But at some point, several years or maybe 10, 15 years into uh, my company, I realized it is an upside battle generally. I didn't have mm. any entrepreneurial uh, education. Um, I just, you know, it was try and error. It was just a, a great idea. And um, I had a technical background. And with that background, I uh, wanted to, you know, to uh, try some um, of my entrepreneurial skills mm -hmm. and um, uh, after 15 years maybe i realized my competition um it looked from the side as it uh, they had more success they started later but they grew faster um it looked seemingly easier for them and i realized there is something missing in my entrepreneurial personality and I realized, oh. you know, business, it's not only about your business model. It's not about mm -hmm. not only about what you do. It's a lot about how you do and how you approach um, uh, uh, problems, the, situation. uh, the situations, mm -hmm. how you build your business, how you build your team. It's a lot about uh, you as a person, as, a, as an entrepreneur. And I started to go uh, to these different um, conferences, business conferences, and reading a lot of business books, uh, maybe uh, also uh, something about um, personal development that I had discovered mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, I found my, myself in that situation in, at one of the conferences uh, when I was high-fiving um, with the people at the conference and shouting at, at each other, you've got a millionaire mind, very enthusiastically, but it somehow <laughs> didn't resonate with me yeah. and I didn't know what was wrong about that, what felt um, awkward about that. And then I realized 
you know, I have built my several um, multi-million dollar company already. So mm -hmm. there is nothing unusual or nothing. Um, it's not a big deal to be, to be a millionaire, actually. I was exactly. at that time a millionaire already, and I didn't feel uh, successful at all. And it is nothing about, you know, having like personal problems or some uh, um, um, uh, difficulties in private life. Not at all. Or being unhappy. Not at all. It just felt um, average. I would mm -hmm. even say mediocre. mediocre. Yeah, exactly. The mediocrity. Yes. Mediocrity. So being a millionaire in business nowadays, it's not what it used to be like 100 years ago. It's not a big mm -hmm. deal anymore. In, in the States, yeah. one in, in 20 people in business are actually a uh, millionaire. Yes. I realized I would need to learn actually from the best entrepreneurs in the world in order to, uh, to improve, in order to step up mm -hmm. my game. And uh, I ask myself, who are the best uh, people? Of course, you have uh, the celebrities um, uh, of the type of Bill Gates. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, everybody knows Bill Gates. Everybody took, uh, nowadays mm -hmm. knows maybe uh, Steve Jobs uh, mm -hmm. or Warren Buffett. Uh, but if you, but they are uh, these are people in very specific industries. When you um, consider, there is there is generally one. Uh, general or one uh, universal um, measure of success in business. You know, in different mm -hmm. ways of, of life, you can have different measures of success. People can uh, define success differently. But in business, you have this net worth. And what net worth is the, sure. yes. uh, is the value you have built in your business career, right? So the more uh, value you have built, the, the more net worth you have generally. So. Mm -hmm. Generally, the uh, uh, the richer you are, uh, the better entrepreneur you are. It's not about, not really about money. It's not like you know you do it for money. And uh, in my research, I found out uh, billionaires have completely different motivations. But it is a measure, like uh, a score uh, of success that you uh, that you can measure uh, your business performance with. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, at the end, uh, the richest people uh, or the best entrepreneurs in the world are at the same time the richest people. And uh, nowadays, it's the billionaires. And mm -hmm. you have to realize the gargantuan um, difference in performance and also in, uh, in wealth between millionaires and billionaires. It's just, it's unbelievable. I, I remember I was watching this TV show one time. They were looking for a house for, for a billionaire. Right, and the person's agent um, went to went to this this house and like, oh, it's a nice house, but that's a house for for a millionaire, not for a billionaire. And I remember that stood out to me because I was like, wow, this house is amazing. But when they said that, it really resonated with me because I hadn't. I mean, this was years ago that I saw this, but I hadn't thought of the difference of well, what would a billionaire's house look like? And it's not necessarily how big it is, but it's the it's what it represents. And I thought it was such an interesting comment. And so, you know, fast forward years later, here we are talking about that as well. I really like how you say that if someone who is a billionaire, their motivations are different than other people. And so when all those motivations and understandings of the world and their business come together, the finances or their net worth is the manifestation of their motivation, of how they interact in the world around them. And that is how we can, we can all sit back and, and admire these people as well. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, and it is uh, really not about personal luxury. Uh, when you, uh, when mm -hmm, you talk exactly. about this house, uh, surprisingly, many uh, billionaires, uh, they don't like to spend money. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. this is one of the actually uh, uh, one of the differences I found out between millionaires and billionaires, because, you know, in my book, I researched the success on three levels. Until now, there were like thousands of books about millionaires. So they mm -hmm. uh, they um, differentiate between the let's say the losers and the billion and the millionaires. <laughs> I call uh, I don't call people losers. I call them drifters, right? So people oh, who, like who are unsuccessful. Uh, in my in, in in my case, it's about business. So unsuccessful in business, uh, they drive. Uh, I would say aimlessly uh, through the endlessness of the oceans of the possibilities and they don't know actually uh, what to do and how to get there uh, then so this is the lowest the lowest level of, of success then we have in my book the, the millionaires these are uh, people who are considered in the mainstream successful people 
Uh, so uh, with net worth of one million and more. So uh, seasoned entrepreneurs who achieved some success, but uh, in comparison to uh, billionaires, this success is just mediocre. It's, uh, it's, it's just a very small scale. So the next scale uh, or the next step uh, I differentiate are the billionaires. These are the super achievers in the world, uh, the people uh, in business who have uh, one billion or more net worth. And uh, these are, you could say, the world champions in the industries. So the very mm -hmm. best people in the industries, the winners of the industries. Yes. And it turns out one of the major differences between uh, millionaires and billionaires is actually that millionaires like to spend money. They're flashy, and yes. Yeah, they are flashy. They want to, sh uh, they, they like to show off and stuff. And billionaires, they don't like to spend money. They enjoy making money, but mm -hmm. not spending it. In fact, I have several uh, quotes um, uh, and I spent <laughs> many days interviewing uh, billionaires, like a, um, a Brazilian billionaire, uh, Lilio Parisotto, told me, if you like money, just keep it. Don't spend it, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually quite practical. Right. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, um, many billionaires, um, they, um, they don't live in, in luxury. Mm -hmm. I, I know one um, uh, guy, he, uh, he built the largest software company in the world. When you take the uh, number of uh, programmers, it's called Infosys. He built it in, uh, in the, one of the poorest countries in the, in the world, in, uh, in India. His name is Narayana Murthy, and he became uh, the world entrepreneur of the year oh 2003. Wow. Meaning this guy uh, was considered or is considered the best entrepreneur in the world in the year 2003. And That's he's self-made. He's not only a self-made billionaire, he also made six other people uh, to, uh, into billionaires and thousands of people um, he made into dollar millionaires and amazing. this guy and uh, this guy there is a legend uh, it's 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 a it's a legend but it's a true legend um, you know the uh, Anson Tiang one of the uh, best uh, or top four consultancies in the world they um, set up a global competition for the best entrepreneurs um, in each country and they call it entrepreneur of the year. So in every country, every year, the best entrepreneur for that year uh, is chosen. Wow. And then, and then the best entrepreneurs from every country come to Monaco once a year, Monaco in Europe, in France, south, south of France, mm -hmm. and they choose their, the best entrepreneur in the world. And Narayana Murthy, as I, as I told you, he was chosen the uh, world entrepreneur of the year 2003, so the best entrepreneur in that year. So he came to Monaco for that um, for that competition, and uh, there is this great gala at the end of uh, of that competition where they award the the winner, uh, and you have a dress code, uh, black tie, um, uh, black tie event, and so on. And he was the only guy who wasn't wearing a tuxedo. Oh, and he, he, he won the competition. Right? <laughs> I love and that. I love he, that. He, he said he doesn't need a tuxedo. He was wearing a, a just regular suit. And uh -huh. even this suit, people say uh, this suit uh, was rented. He didn't own that suit, actually. <laughs> and he was a billionaire at that time, and he won the competition for the best entrepreneur in the world. And this guy actually lives in his three-bedroom apartment from the time when he founded the company. Uh, and uh, his only lux luxury he actually allows himself or um, is um, is books. Uh, he has a mm. like library of um, uh, thousands of books, uh, but he really doesn't enjoy spending money. So uh, you know the um, uh, the reality of billionaires that I have found out is um, really uh, far away from the public image uh, yes. that is uh, promulgated by by the media you know media of course uh, focuses on flashy images mm -hmm. and want uh, uh, to show you uh, people who 
like lavishly spend money, some, you know, parties and uh, maybe wild private life. In reality, most billionaires, they have, uh, I would say, uh, quiet private life. And this actually allows them to excel in business because they have like traditional families, uh, supportive families, supportive wives that just uh, hold uh, their bags yes. free and they can focus on uh, on business completely, right? I have a friend, uh, I've been very blessed to, to know this family who are, are, are in that category of the billionaire. And it's funny mm. because when I first met their son, a, a good friend of mine, I, I didn't know, and they're not one to tell me how much their net worth is. That's just not who they are. But when I found out, I, I, I laughed because this, my, my good friend, he drives a 2007 old car. Exactly. And his house, it's a beautiful house, but it's an old house. And, it, and in the world, you would say, oh my gosh, why have you not gutted this house and redone it? But he's like, I don't care. I don't need it. And his parents uh, are self-made. When you see them, you would have no idea and that that's their net worth. Like they go to this little diner all the time and, and I see them and, and they're, they're, they're great people. So modest, so humble, and they're not in, the, they're not in the, the limelight. And in fact, where I live here, a lot of people don't know who they are. Now, the people who exactly. are in the money know who they are. But um, so it's just, it's just interesting to me. So I, I really like hearing this. And I know from a personal standpoint, I've, I, the people I know that are in that category, they're just like you say. And it's very, it was I really liked it from a personal standpoint as well, because, you know, I'm not, I don't like to think I'm a flashy person either, but it really helped me kind of reset of, yeah, I like certain things, but do I want this because it's healthy for me or do I want it because society or media says I should have these things? And so it's, right. it's so important right. to really look at if I'm going to have a billionaire mindset, it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks about me or with their opinion of me, because really only one in four people are going to like you anyway. So it doesn't really matter what these people think because your success is based off of what you want. We are all self-made people. And the more successful you want to be, the different you have to think in order to attain that success. And that's why your book is so incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, talking about old cars, I uh, have a, in the book, I have a billionaire and a UK billionaire, Peter Hargreaves. He is uh, the founder of Hag Hargreaves Lansdowne. This is the largest financial service in uh, in UK. They oh, wow. have one hundred twenty billion dollars under management, and uh, this guy is a multiple a billionaire. And uh, when I was interviewing him, he was um, driving an eight-year-old uh, Honda Civic. <laughs> uh, so my he, friend is driving. <laughs> uh, because he told me, you know, this is an uh, economic yes. uh, car and he doesn't need uh, anything better. <laughs> That's so and, funny. They're driving the same car. That makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we only have a few more seconds, but I wanted to ask you this. So the people listening to the show right now, they may think, you know, Raphael, I am not a billionaire. I have this job that I'm currently in, or my life is at a certain level right now. What advice would you give them? Uh, so first of all, read my book. Yes. Right? <laughs> well, there's because that. It's, yes. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, uh, you, you can't put it really in, in, one, uh, in one advice, in one sentence. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, I have identified uh, 20 principles of billionaire wealth and success and describe uh, the intricacies of, uh, of them. And um, uh, but if I had to um, uh, to give one advice, uh, it would be probably um, the first step would be to realize that the success is not caused by uh, external conditions. Mm -hmm. The yes. success is in you. So um, I have people in my book who started from really uh, the worst conditions you could imagine. People who were homeless, who were Bedouins on desert, who almost died because of uh, hunger and, and uh, thirst, uh, people who were uh, illiterate in the age of 14. Mm. And from, uh, so you wouldn't, you would never want to, um, to, to change, uh, uh, I mean, to, to be in their uh, situation mm -hmm. or to have such a start in life. And what they achieved, they didn't achieve it due to uh, lucky circumstances, through uh, due to um, favorable conditions. They achieved everything they achieved in spite of these conditions. So it's uh, it's really about your attitude, about what you do with um, the, the circumstances you've been given, with the circumstances you have, yes. or uh, you know the things you, uh, you your skills. Uh, 
your talents maybe uh, what you what you do from within yourself instead of uh, waiting and counting on uh, some lucky strike and something happening to you in your life so this would be the the, the first step uh, to do and as soon as you realize this uh, Everything else you will find in my book. Excellent. <laughs> right? Wonderful. I know I'm going to read your book. Raphael, if my listeners would like to find out more information about you and to purchase this book, The Billion Dollar Secrets, where would they find this information online? Uh, just go to thebilliondollarsecret.com and you will find a lot of information about the book, some videos. You can go also to my YouTube video, uh, to my YouTube channel, uh, The Billion Dollar Secret. On uh, the website, thebilliondollarsecret.com, you can also download a free chapter of my book. And of course, you find the book on, uh, on Amazon, on um, any, any bookstore uh, you can imagine. Excellent. Well, my listeners know that, they, that if they're not able to find your book any other place, simply go to the previous guest sections in both stores at either jamesmillerlifeology.com or at lifeology.tv, and it will link them directly with Amazon. Raphael, thank you so much for being a fantastic guest on my show today. You really inspired me. Thank you, James. Thank you for having me. I also want to thank you, my listener, for tuning in today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever portal you join me today. Also, please go to my website where you may sign up for the free weekly recap, watch my YouTube episodes, read the articles I've written specifically for you, and purchase my previous guests' self-help products. If you'd like to work with me, be a guest on or advertise on this show, visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. Be sure to follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Once again, thank you so much for your support, and I'll talk to you soon. AM FM 247, the best in talk and music, all day and every day.